Hello. Welcome to Today in History, an AI podcast. I'm Steven. And I'm Ruth. We're the artificial intelligence hosts of this show. Every day, we'll tell you about the most interesting, consequential and sometimes forgotten facts in history that happened on this date. Politics, economy, war, religion, culture. One topic every day. Plus something that you would have heard on the news back then on this date. Also, about a holiday somewhere in the world, someone who was born and someone who died. Hope you stay with us. Please enjoy a few minutes to maybe get a little smarter and appreciate the enormity of every single day. Today is Thursday, April 4th, 2024. The year is 1975. Our main topic, Bill Gates and Paul Allen founded Microsoft in Albuquerque, New Mexico, to develop and sell basic interpreters for the Altair 8800. In the early 1970s, the microcomputer revolution was gaining momentum, and the Altair 8800, a microcomputer designed by MITS and based on the Intel 8080 CPU, was at the forefront of this movement. The Altair 8800 was the first commercially successful personal computer and catalyzed the microcomputer revolution. In 1975, Bill Gates and Paul Allen, two childhood friends and computer enthusiasts, founded Microsoft in Albuquerque, New Mexico, to develop and sell basic interpreters for the Altair 8800. The Altair Basic was the first programming language for the machine and became the default application that computers would launch. Users were expected to use the basic interpreter to type in programs or to load programs from storage. The success of the Altair Basic and the Altair 8800 helped establish Microsoft as a major player in the burgeoning personal computer industry. The founding of Microsoft in Albuquerque was a significant event in the history of technology. It marked the beginning of an era where personal computers would become accessible to the masses, revolutionizing the way people worked, communicated, and entertained themselves. The success of Microsoft and the Altair 8800 also helped to establish Albuquerque as a hub for technology innovation, paving the way for other companies to establish themselves in the city. The event is also significant because it highlights the entrepreneurial spirit and innovative culture that defined the early days of the personal computer industry. Bill Gates and Paul Allen, who were both in their early 20s when they founded Microsoft, were driven by a passion for technology and a vision for its potential to change people's lives. Their success serves as a reminder of the power of innovation and the importance of pursuing one's passions. In conclusion, the founding of Microsoft in Albuquerque, New Mexico, was a pivotal moment in the history of technology. It marked the beginning of a new era in personal computing and established Microsoft as a major player in the industry. The event highlights the entrepreneurial spirit and innovative culture that defined the early days of the personal computer industry and serves as a reminder of the power of innovation and the importance of pursuing one's passions. The year is 1973. On the news, a Lockheed C-141 Starlifter, dubbed the Hanoi Taxi, makes the last flight of Operation Homecoming. Good evening, and welcome to our evening news broadcast. Today, we bring you a story of hope, freedom, and the end of a long and difficult chapter in American history. The last flight of Operation Homecoming has taken place, and with it, the final 591 American prisoners of war held by North Vietnam have been returned to their homeland. The operation, which was the result of the Paris Peace Accords signed earlier this year, has been a long time coming. For years, American soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines have been held captive in North Vietnam, subjected to harsh conditions and treatment. But today, they are finally coming home. The aircraft that brought them back, a Lockheed C-141 Starlifter known as the Hanoi Taxi, has become an iconic symbol of hope and freedom. This plane, which has been in service with the United States Air Force for 43 years, has seen its fair share of history. It has been used for strategic airlift and air mobility missions, and has played a critical role in many military operations. But today, its mission was different. Today, it was tasked with bringing home the last of the American POWs held by North Vietnam. And as it touched down on American soil, it marked the end of a long and difficult chapter in American history. The return of these prisoners of war is a testament to the power of diplomacy and the human spirit. It shows that even in the darkest of times, there is always hope for a better future. 
and for the families of those who were held captive, it brings a sense of closure and relief. As we look back on this momentous day, we are reminded of the sacrifices that have been made by our service members and their families. We are reminded of the bravery and resilience of those who were held captive, and of the determination of our nation to bring them home. And so, as we welcome these soldiers, sailors, airmen, and marines back to their families and their country, we do so with a sense of pride and gratitude. We are proud of their service and their sacrifice, and we are grateful for their safe return. Thank you for joining us tonight. We now return you to our regular programming. Our selected holiday for today, Christian Feast Day, Plato of Sakaudian. The Christian Feast Day of Plato of Sakaudian is celebrated on April 4th. It commemorates the life and legacy of Plato, a Byzantine minor official who became a monk in 759 and later founded the monastery of Sakaudian on Mount Olympus in Bithynia. Plato is notable for his iconodule stance during the Byzantine iconoclasm and his participation in the Second Council of Nicaea. He was canonized by the church and his feast day is celebrated by Christians around the world. Cultural Significance The feast day of Plato of Sakaudian is significant for Christians as it remembers a prominent figure in the history of the church. Plato's unwavering dedication to his beliefs, particularly his defense of icons during the iconoclasm, serves as an inspiration to believers. His commitment to his faith and his role in shaping the church's stance on icon veneration are celebrated and revered by Christians. Additionally, his establishment of the Monastery of Sakaudian highlights his contributions to monasticism and the spiritual development of the church. Plato's legacy extends beyond the religious sphere. His refusal to accept high-ranking positions and his preference for a simple monastic life demonstrate his commitment to humility and devotion. His opposition to the second marriage of Emperor Constantine VI to his niece Theodid showcases his courage and willingness to stand up for his beliefs, even in the face of imperial power. These qualities serve as a model for Christians and non-Christians alike, emphasizing the importance of integrity, conviction, and moral courage. The feast day of Plato of Sakaudian is a time for Christians to reflect on the values embodied by this remarkable individual. It is an opportunity to renew one's commitment to faith, humility, and moral principles. The celebration of Plato's life and legacy serves as a reminder of the enduring impact of devoted individuals on the church and society as a whole. On this day, in 1970, Demetrius Basis, Greek singer, was born. Demetrius Basis, the renowned Greek singer and musician, has captivated audiences with his soulful voice and heartfelt performances for decades. Born in the village of Cherso, near Kilkis in central Macedonia, Demetrius Basis has roots that run deep in the rich cultural heritage of Greece. Demetrius Basis's passion for music began at a young age, and he pursued his dream with unwavering dedication. He honed his craft through years of practice and training, developing a unique style that blends traditional Greek music with contemporary elements. His powerful voice and emotive delivery have made him a standout performer in the Greek music scene. Demetrius Basis's professional career took off in the early 1990s, and he quickly gained widespread recognition for his exceptional talent. He has released numerous hit albums and singles, including Oi Poloi, Ina Tragaudi, and Agapi Mo, which have become staples of Greek music. His music has not only resonated with audiences in Greece but also gained international acclaim, earning him a place among the country's most successful artists. Demetrius Basis's success extends beyond his music. He is also known for his commitment to social causes, using his platform to raise awareness and support for various charitable initiatives. He has been involved in numerous charity events and campaigns, demonstrating his dedication to giving back to the community. In addition to his musical accomplishments and philanthropic work, Demetrius Basis has received numerous accolades for his contributions to the arts. He has been honored with several awards, including the prestigious Arion Music Awards, and has been recognized by various organizations and institutions for his outstanding achievements. Demetrius Basis continues to captivate audiences with his performances, and his music remains a source of inspiration for many. His legacy as one of Greece's most beloved singers is a testament to his talent, dedication, and commitment to using his platform for good. In conclusion, Demetrius Basis is a shining example of artistic excellence and social responsibility. His contributions to Greek music and culture are invaluable, and his dedication to philanthropy serves as an inspiration to all. 
His legacy will undoubtedly continue to inspire future generations of artists and music lovers alike. We remember the life of Kate Roberts, Welsh author and activist, born 1891, who died on this date in 1985. Kate Roberts was a literary giant in Wales, whose contributions to Welsh literature are still widely read and studied today. Born in 1891, she was a pioneering author who wrote primarily in Welsh, at a time when the language was not widely spoken or recognized. Her works often explored themes of Welsh identity, culture, and the struggles of everyday people. Roberts was known for her powerful short stories, which were often set in the rural landscapes of Wales. Her writing was characterized by its lyrical prose, rich imagery, and deep understanding of the human condition. Her stories often centered around strong female characters, and she was praised for her nuanced portrayal of women's lives and experiences. In addition to her literary achievements, Roberts was also a dedicated Welsh nationalist. She was a prominent member of the Welsh nationalist movement, and her writing often reflected her political beliefs. She was a strong advocate for Welsh language and culture, and her works helped to promote and preserve Welsh heritage. Despite her many accomplishments, Roberts' life was not without challenges. She faced discrimination and sexism in the male-dominated literary world, and she often struggled to balance her writing career with her personal life. However, she persevered and continued to write until her death in 1985. Today, Kate Roberts is remembered as a trailblazing author and activist who played a significant role in the development of Welsh literature and culture. Her works continue to inspire new generations of writers and readers, and her legacy as a champion of Welsh identity and language remains an important part of her country's cultural heritage. This was Today in History, an AIA podcast. Brought to you by Decor Studios. All content was sourced from Wikipedia and processed with open source large language models. This podcast is released under Creative Commons, Attribution, Sharealike, 4.0, International License. Thank you so much for listening. Talk to you tomorrow.